Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to be another hat tutorial. I'm not sure if you can tell how it is currently positioned, but the hat I am wearing is made out of a base that is shaped like a heart. I came up with this idea shortly after filming my pillbox hat tutorial. Doing that got me thinking about how different a hat would look if the top was shaped like a star or a triangle or a heart. And I really zeroed in on the heart idea because it seems so appropriate for February, the month of love. So that same day I made the mock-up for it and the next day I made the hat. I have kind of mixed feelings with how this turned out. I think it's a really cute idea, and I think the hat itself is quite cute, but since I've made it so large just for the sake of this tutorial so you'd be able to clearly see all of the steps, the heart shape ends up being quite distorted on your head, and it also ends up being quite large. I think this would be much cute as a little fascinator that sits nicely on one side of your head. For consistency's sake, I've included the pattern for this hat with the dimensions that I followed in the description box down below, but please feel free to size this down or up to suit the look that you're going for. As always, I've done my best to explain all of the steps, but if you have any questions by the time you reach the end of this video, then please feel free to ask them down below. And if you haven't seen it already, you should definitely check out my pillbox hat tutorial. It's a very similar hat in terms of construction, but a little bit simpler, and you can draft it yourself. So I will leave a link to that up here as well as in the description box down below, and I hope you enjoy this video! For this project, you will need a ruler or some sort of measuring device, scissors, wire. Mine is 18 gauge galvanized steel wire, which is what I would recommend for hat making. You'll also need tin snips or wire cutters, pliers, small binder clips, sewing pins, a needle and thread, and a marking pen. I'll be using a sewing machine for certain parts as well, but it isn't necessary for this project. And of course you'll need heavyweight interfacing. This one is made for purses and feels like stiffened felt, but heavy buckram can work too. You'll need fabric for the exterior of the hat and a lining material, along with scraps of fluffy quilt batting. Unlike my pillbox hat tutorial, I'm not showing the drafting method for this hat because it was a little more complicated and also kind of messy. But don't worry, my mock-up may not look very pretty, but it was functional. So I traced the design onto paper, which is the pattern I'm using in this video. And thanks to Ursula and her far superior illustration skills, this has been outlined, labeled, and resized so it can be printed out onto standard paper. This pattern is available on my blog, which I will link down below. Just download the images and print them out, and it should be good. But you can double check the size with the ruler since the correct dimensions are written on the pattern. Or you can resize the pieces yourself to make a smaller or larger hat. For ease of printing, the crown pieces have been split, so after cutting it out, tape the pieces together according to the notches. And now you are ready to get started. Here I'm pinning the pattern onto the interfacing, then tracing around it with a marker. As I said earlier, the base material I'm using is a thick felt weight interfacing. I prefer this to buckram since it's easier to sew through and less prone to cracking. It's also easier for me to acquire since Joanne stocks it. But if you can't find this stuff, buckram will work as an alternative. While I'm tracing the crown pieces onto the interfacing as well, you will need to cut out two of these pieces. Or you can cut it with the center front placed on a fold, but that wastes a lot of material so I cut two separate pieces and sewed them together later on. Now everything gets cut out. You might notice that the marker leaves a pretty wide line. Because of this, make sure to cut on the inner portion of that line since that will be the most accurate dimension. Now I'm going to sew the two crown pieces together at the center front. If you're using interfacing like me, you can use a zigzag stitch and top stitch them together. For buckram, you'll want to back this section with ribbon or twill tape before sewing, since it isn't as flexible and may crack at the stitch points if it isn't backed with something. With all the pieces sorted, it's time for the wire. I'm using 18 gauge steel wire that I picked up from a hardware store. You want wire that is sturdy enough to hold its shape, but also bendable and small enough that it won't be bulky. I find the 18 gauge steel to be perfect. You want to cut a length of wire long enough to go around the perimeter of each piece with several inches to spare. Then form one end into a small, flat loop with the help of the pliers. Place the loop in the middle of the vertical end of the crown. This will be the back, so if it distorts the interface at all, it's less likely to be seen. Use your fingers and pliers to shape the wire around the edge of the interfacing, and temporarily secure it in place with small binder clips as you go. You want the wire to sit no farther than one quarter inch away from the edge. Try your best to get the wire to sit flat against the interfacing. This can take a bit of bending, but gives the best finished result. Once you reach the end, overlap the ends of the wire by at least an inch, then form another loop and trim the excess wire off. The ends need to overlap, otherwise there is a weak point in the hat. All these steps were repeated for the heart as well. I started the wire at one of the humps in the heart since that will be at the back, but you can start it wherever you want as long as it isn't at a corner. 
Now take those pieces over to the sewing machine. You'll want to use a medium stitch width and length and a zigzag stitch to secure the wire in place. Make sure to keep the wire positioned in the middle of the foot so the needle skips over it when forming the zigzag stitch. Take the corners very carefully when doing this and make sure to skip the looped portion at the end. We'll be stitching that part down by hand in a minute. Speaking of by hand, you can sew the wire in completely by hand if you don't have access to a sewing machine. I did that literally for years before getting this machine. Just use a whip stitch and make sure there are at least 4 stitches per an inch. Here are the pieces after the wire is mostly sewn in, but we still have to secure the loops. In my last hat tutorial I did this first, but when you do it last you avoid the thread getting tangled in the binder clips, which is why I switched it up this time. I'm securing the loops and the overlapping portions of wire by hand with 4 strands of thread. This is where the wire is most likely to pop up and interfere with the design, so the thread needs to be relatively strong. Make sure these stitches go all the way through the material and are very secure. Also, try and keep the knots in the thread on the same side of the interfacing that has the wire, otherwise they may cause bumps in the top fabric when we get to adding it. Now the wire sewing process is officially done. And it's time for batting. To make the heart look more squishy and add dimension, I decided to pat it a little bit. Step 1 in this process is cutting out a layer of quilt batting that is around the same size as the heart. Then set this aside. Build up the center portion of the heart with small cotton ball sized scraps. Keep adding these until you like the shape, then plop the heart shaped piece of batting on top to smooth everything out. Now it's time to cut out the fabric which will cover the interfacing pieces. The fabric I've chosen is a bright red melton wool, but any medium to heavyweight fabric will work. Use the original pattern as a guide, but cut the fabric to be at least an inch larger than it in every direction. I'm doing this because the heart is now padded, which means it will take more material to cover. And also because it's an awkward shape and the extra inch gives it a large margin for error. I'm repeating this process with the crown pieces, but since they aren't padded and are a more normal shape, I'm only cutting the fabric to be a half inch larger than the pattern in every direction. I'm not being super precise about this, except at the center front edge. This will be sewn with a half inch seam allowance, so it's important that it's accurate. Once everything was cut out, I pinned the crown pieces together at the center front edge. Then sewed them together with a half inch seam allowance. Here are the pieces after being ironed. Set the crown pieces aside for now and get back to work on the heart. Because everyone knows that love takes more work. Lay the fabric over top of the side covered in batting, making sure the right side is facing outward. Once the fabric is relatively centered, flip it over and begin pinning the edges to the underside of the interfacing. You want the edges to look smooth from the front side, so make sure to check what it looks like from the front often during this process. To get the edges to turn inward nicely around the point of the heart, I had to clip the material. Then I continued pinning. Before sewing the main edges down, I decided to reinforce the point I clipped. I did this by whip stitching a rectangle of extra material to the cut edge. Then I continued whip stitching to secure the rest of the edges inward. And for this I used two strands of thread, simply because the thread is really prone to catching on the pins. If this causes a strand to break, then at least you still have one left as a backup. It may not look like it, but I think this step is the most annoying part. I hate trying to hand sew and having the thread get caught on things. That and sewing machine problems are my least favorite things to deal with. Here it is after being covered. Isn't it cute? It reminds me of a Build-A-Bear heart. I repeated this process with the crown. Luckily this was less frustrating since there was enough room to place the pins horizontally which made my thread less prone to catching on them. And in case it wasn't obvious, I'm not stitching through the entire layer of interfacing. Since it's like a compact felt, I can stitch through some of the fibers without my stitches being visible from the front side of it. Now for lining. I know I originally showed a muslin I was going to use for lining, but that seemed awfully boring and out of character for me, so I decided to use this rose printed cotton instead. This time I'm tracing around the pieces and adding a half inch seam allowance, then cutting them out. Since the edges are being turned inward, not sewn as a seam, none of this has to be very precise. Now pin the lining to the messy side of the pieces. If necessary, clip the corners or curves, then begin folding the edges inward. You can skip lining the hat if you want, it won't affect how the exterior looks. But it adds a nice level of finish, which I appreciate. Once it is nicely pinned, use whip stitches to secure it in place. And this is done by sewing the lining to the portions of the top layer of fabric that are turned inward. 
I repeated these steps for the crown of the hat, but my camera was threatening to die, so I did that part off camera while charging it. Here the crown is all nicely finished. Now let's make this look like a hat. Fold the crown so the right sides are facing each other, then stitch the center back edges together using four strands of thread and small whip stitches. Shape the crown into something that better resembles a heart. Then stitch the point of the indent of the heart to the center back seam of the crown using whip stitches. Once this point is sewn, pin the front point of the heart to the center front of the crown, and add a few pins to the side to make sure everything will fit. Then continue stitching the crown and heart together using tiny whip stitches. It's a tricky balance since the stitches should be large enough to catch the interfacing, but also small enough that they aren't super visible or messy looking. It just takes practice, though it's a little different with each material, so sometimes practice doesn't even guarantee a great looking result. But just keep going and do the best that you can. Once you reach the end, tie the thread off, and if you want, the hat is done! However, since mine is quite large and intended to sit across the head, I decided to sew in a veil comb. Unfortunately, there wasn't an obvious place to stitch this, so I sewed it on with a single tacking stitch to the point of the heart. Not ideal, but it does still work. I got a few questions about using these last time, and it's really easy. The comb slides into the hair, and the band around the top sits against your head and prevents it from slipping or sliding further. I made a lot of heavy hats and these would cut them all in place and I don't have especially thick hair or anything. And this is the finished hat! Like with any hat, you could add a brooch or feathers if you wanted, or you can just leave it be. I definitely played around with the idea of adding feathers, but I thought it was nice to keep it as a simple heart. So that is the end of it. As I said in the beginning, I think this hat turned out really cute shape-wise, and I do like how it looks on my head. It's just a little bit larger than I think it should have been, so I definitely recommend scaling down the pattern slightly if you decide to make this hat. And of course, if you have any questions that aren't answered by this video or in the description box, then please feel free to ask me down below and I will do my best to get back to you. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching.